Welcome back from the break, guys. We now have a top 10 of my favorite games, ranging from when I was younger to the games I'm playing now. Head over to our Facebook page and tell us some of your favorite games. At number 10, it's Dungeon Defenders. Blending RPG and tower defense gameplay, Dungeon Defenders creates a unique experience that stole a lot of my free time back in 2010, and with the sequel on the horizon, I'm both excited and scared to think it might happen again. <laughs> It's dangerous to go. Coming in at number 9, it's Super Smash Bros. I've been a fan of the series since the original on the N64, with each iteration being a day one purchase for me. This is easily my favourite party game. With simple controls and mechanics, it's easy for anyone to pick up and play. At number 8, it's The Binding of Isaac. The second big game from Super Meat Boy creator Edmund McMillan takes the dungeons from the original Legend of Zelda game and throws random generation, hundreds of items, and a great sense of humor into the mix. This game is so addictive, you'll be saying to yourself, just one more run. <laughs> Valve's Team Fortress 2 is my number 7. My first taste of competitive shooters, TF2 holds a special place in my heart. While it has changed a lot over the years since its original release, I still find myself coming back for some old school capture the flag on 2 Fort. The sixth spot on my list goes to the FPS RPG Borderlands 2. This sequel improved on everything the original had going for it. Enjoyable co-op gameplay, great humour and a large amount of replayability are the reasons I've played over 200 hours of this game. The middle position of the list goes to Portal 2. After the amazing original, I was longing for more Portal. When it was announced in 2010, the wait until its 2011 release was excruciating. I was anticipating it so much that I bought the game on both PS3 and PC, hoping that one would be released early. At number 4, it's Gary's Mod. While not technically a game, I've sunk so many hours into it that it just had to be on this list. The best sandbox game out there, Gmod lets players do almost anything they can imagine. When I was younger, this was essentially my Lego. Hours were spent building flying bathtubs and making ramps to launch them off. The classic SNES game Super Metroid is my number 3. One of the first games I ever played, it remained in my mind like a half-remembered dream up until I revisited it recently. The immersion and atmosphere the world of Super Metroid created will stick with me forever. From the initial touchdown onto the planet, to the final showdown with Mother Brain. At second, it's Counter-Strike Global Offensive. While I've only recently started playing CS, it only took a few games of competitive to put it this high on my list. To me, this is the ultimate shooter, based purely on skill rather than some of the other shooters that rely on some random aspects of gameplay. And at number one, it's Ratchet & Clank. This franchise combines everything I love about some of the other games on the list, such as humor, replayability, and great gameplay, but it goes further. It could just be the nostalgia, but those nights of my childhood spent basking in the warm glow from the TV are some of my most cherished memories. Hi, I'm Rick, and I will be doing a retrospective on the in-game history of Assassin's Creed. The Assassin's Creed series follows the Noble Assassin Order as they fight for the freedom of humanity from the insidious forces of the Knights Templar. The games are set over several different time periods, from the Third Crusade in the year 1191 to the present day. Key historical periods depicted include the Italian Renaissance, Golden Age of Piracy, the American Revolution, the French Revolution, and more recently announced Victorian England. Each game features a different time period and protagonist, but are all connected in the massive fictional universe I will explore in this retrospective. The one thread that connects the timeline is Desmond Miles, a bartender in the year 2012 who is kidnapped by the pharmaceutical organization Abstergo, the modern day Templars, and forced into a machine called the Animus. The Animus builds from the theory that our DNA contains the memory of our ancestors and allows the user to view, interact, and explore a digital reconstruction of these memories. Desmond is the descendant of a 12th century assassin, Altir Abila Ahad and so the game has spent exploring his memories with Warren Vidic and his assistant Lucy Stillman. The Assassin Order is a secret society, 
dedicated to the greater good and ultimate freedom of humanity. Their opposite is the Templars, who believe that humanity can't be trusted with their own freedom and seek to control the world. Both groups have been manipulating history from the shadows, influencing world events in a war that has been going on for thousands of years. Each side seeks pieces of Eden, immensely powerful artifacts produced by a species predating humanity. Both the Assassins and Templars interacted with a large number of famous European faces, including King Richard the Lionheart, Leonardo da Vinci, Rodrigo and Cesare Borgia, and Niccolo Machiavelli. When the franchise crossed the Atlantic and joined colonial America, figures such as George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Paul Revere either served or were manipulated by the Assassins or Templars. Ubisoft has weaved their fictional history throughout our real one, repositioning key historical figures and events as key players in their series narrative. This fictional history starts over 100,000 years ago with the evolution of the first intelligent race to walk the Earth, known as the First Civilization, or Homo sapiens divinus. They were a powerful and smart people, gifted with several different abilities to perceive the world around them, including a larger brain, longer pregnancy and lifespan, a triple helix DNA, and a sixth sense. The first civilization produced amazing technology and a near-perfect world, but they required a workforce. So they took nearby prehistoric beings and altered their genes to create two strains of humanity, Neanderthals and us, Homo sapiens. The Neanderthals were used as a military force due to their incredible strength, while humans were designated workers. To keep their servants under control and docile, the first civilization created powerful artifacts called Apples of Eden, which used a neurotransmitter to control the human brain. These ancient humans could not comprehend their creators, and so perceived them as gods. Around 75,010 BC, crossbreeding between the two races created the hybrids, a species which couldn't be controlled as humans could, who rose up against their gods to end human slavery. Led by the legendary Eve, the hybrids started the human first civilization war, the first war ever recorded. The first civilization was superior in technology, however, due to the slower reproduction rate and lower population than their subjects, the hybrids used their immunity to the neurotransmitters to get close to the first civilization members and kill them. They were dubbed assassins by the first civilization. Each side was evenly matched, and so the war raged on for years. However, the war distracted both sides from an impending disaster created by the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field. When a solar flare caused the magnetic poles to flip, this caused earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and so forth. The disaster turned the planet to cinders and devastated population numbers. The first civilization and humans decided to end the war and work together to rebuild after the great disaster, building vaults to warn future generations that the disaster would come again. Eventually, the first civilization couldn't sustain their numbers after the disaster and died out, leaving us humans to inherit the Earth. The assassin leaders decided to use the technology left behind called Pieces of Eden to better humanity and keep them free, shaping their mantra, nothing is true, everything is permitted. The children of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, came into possession of their parents' Apple of Eden, starting the Assassin Templar War over its rightful owner. These pieces of Eden were passed down throughout human history, leading to events which were later recorded as religious miracles, such as the parting of the Red Sea, the main Assassin's Creed series picks up after these events have taken place, as trace the lives of key individuals in the Assassin's Templar War. The first game is set in 1191 and follows the story of Altair as he fights the Templars during the Third Crusade. Its sequel is Assassin's Creed 2 and follows the story of Ezio Auditor as he avenges the death of his family during the Italian Renaissance. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the third game and continues Ezio's story as he tries to liberate Rome from the tyranny of the Borgia family, who are the leaders of the Italian Templars. Assassin's Creed Revelations follows the later years of Ezio in Constantinople in 1511, trying to find the secret to Altair's library. Assassin's Creed 3 is set in revolutionary America and holds the story of Catham Kenway as he strengthens the Templars in America, and his illegitimate son Connor Kenway a Native American assassin who fights to keep his people free from Templar hands. Assassin's Creed IV follows the story of Hatham's father, Edward Kenway, an infamous pirate in 1715 who was searching for the Observatory, 
a first civilization ruin of great power. Assassin's Creed Rogue tells the story of Shay Cormac, an assassin turned Templar who wishes to stop the assassins from hurting innocent people through messing with first civilization ruins as he partakes in the Seven Years' War. Assassin's Creed Unity follows the story of Arno Dorian, who is trying to avenge the death of his father and adopted father while he searches for a sage. A sage is a human reincarnation of Aita, a member of the first civilization. The Assassin's Creed game series is of interesting lore and wonders, with the development team being made of a multicultural team of various religious faiths and beliefs. In this retrospective, we have looked at the history of humanity and the assassins in the world of Assassin's Creed. From the creators of humanity to the war of assassins and Templars, I hope you have enjoyed.